When a mine retrenches 10,000 people, it's on the front page of every newspaper. Our group creates more than 12,000 new job opportunities every year. You never read about it. A little bit of the uniqueness of Pepcor is the fact that we have very old brands that has been in existence for many, many years. But at the same time, we have a group of new businesses, young, exciting businesses. And if you put that together, you get a great recipe for the future on how we can build the business and expand the business. I'm coming to you from Tigerberg today. It is an industrial park in Cape Town. It is also the home of Pepco. Pep is a multinational retail company based in Cape Town, South Africa. Founded in 1965, PEP operated in 11 countries in southern Africa with the opening of an outlet in Lobito, Angola in November 2008. As of November 2009 the company reported over 1,400 stores in operation with total employment equaling 14,000 employees. It also owns and runs the largest clothing plant in southern Africa, where it manufactures much of its clothing. In 1955 Gustav Gottschalk decided to sell his store called The Bargain Shop in Erpington, due to his advanced years. The store dealt in second-hand furniture, clothing, shoes, medicine, food, bicycles and even donkey carts. He ran the store profitably for numerous years alongside the help of his assistant, Pete Strauss. He then sold the store to Gaui Esterweisen, who was a partner in a law office in the area, and also handled some of his legal affairs. Esther Wisen approached a young Rainier Van Ruyen to help him run the store on a part-time basis. Part of the deal was that they both contribute capital to the venture, Rainier added £400, while Esther Wisen forked out £300, the balance of £800 had to be paid over time. The following two months, Rainier spent his weekends at the store under the guidance of Gottschalk, to learn all the tricks of the business, as he'd no experience of how to run a shop. When Gustav eventually left Rainier was fortunate enough to keep the skills and experience of Gustav's assistant, Pete Strauss, and the latter soon became a friend and his right hand in the handling of the business. Rainier became involved full-time and began his magic by restructuring the nature of the store. The trading space was enlarged to about 170 square meter by leasing two further rooms in the small building in Brug Street. The stock composition was changed from Gustav's wide selection to largely low-priced clothing. Elimination of Credit Sales The business started showing signs of growth in sales and profit during the next few months. Rainier then enlisted the part-time help of Cody and Olaf Alice with Esther Wisen working on Saturdays. After realizing there was an unexploited market for what the store was selling, it became clear to Rainier that it was indeed a feasible business. In late 1956 Rainier ended his partnership with Esther Wisen by buying out his share of the business for £1,800. The two remained good friends and Esther Wisen continued with his legal practice in the area. Having full ownership meant Rainier had to now take care of virtually every aspect of his fledgling business by himself, with the most important being the purchasing of stock. This required him to drive once or further times per month to Cape Town where he bought enough stock to fill in his vehicle, and then drive back to Erpington the same day to have the stock on the shelves the very next day. In those days there weren't any proper roads between Cape Town and Erpington, it took Reiner at least 10 hours to complete the journey one way. In 1957, he converted his store into a private company called Bargain Stores, which was the holding company. He continued to experiment with different prices, products and methods of promotion. By then he'd formulated his business idea, and although he couldn't express it in words at that time, he knew that the only way he could sell clothing effectively and profitably was to be cheaper than any other business. In early 1959, Rainier opened another store in Erpington called Erpington Folksclear. He wanted to use the new store for a time in order to experiment with selling discounted clothing. By the end of 1959, he developed an identity for his business and also established a successful marketing strategy. In 1960, he amalgamated the two stores as subsidiaries under a holding company called BG Bazaars, 
and moved to a larger premise in Irpington CBD with a small warehouse. With the business blossoming Rainier decided to increase his personnel by hiring his family members including his sister, Baba, brother, Gert, his wife, Nella, and others. He also started to expand the business beyond Irpington by launching stores in areas of the Western and Northern Cape. As an experiment, he introduced an innovative concept of self-service into his stores as opposed to being served by someone from behind a counter. This enabled customers to touch the clothes and try them on in the dressing room. By the mid-1960s the four BG Bazaar stores were turning out a healthy profit and Rainier's intention was to open at least 10 stores in towns like Priesca, Kimberley, Postmastberg, Verdendel, Mariesburg, Calvina. Malmesbury and Parl, these towns were mostly in a defined geographical area between Irpington and Cape Town on the route of his frequent travel to Cape Town. BG Bazaar's successful business principles were based on good quality clothing blankets and shoes at very low prices, with low overheads and friendly personal service. The stores were neither fashion houses nor flashy, just plain value for money big volumes and low margins similar in philosophy to giants like Walmart, the biggest retailer in the world. By 1965 the Van Ruyen family were financially independent and relatively well off. Rainier wanted to expand the business even further, but realized that farther expansion would require further capital and resources that his family couldn't provide. The success of the business brought forward multitudinous people with offers to invest their money into the business. At this point Rainier decided to run with an unusual policy which attempted to link investors and employees. People who wanted to invest had to be prepared to work actively in the business and similarly, those who worked for him also had to invest in the group. As you'd anticipate this policy didn't stick with most of the potential investors. Numerous backed out and he ended up raising only 50,000 rands of the plan 250,000 rands. Unfortunately, some of the men with the biggest mouths got cold feet and some of the big money talkers were without substance. Reiner explaining why numerous investors pulled out. At the age of 33, Reiner undertook the next step in his career founding Pep Stores in 1965. He already had 10 years of invaluable experience in retail. He firmly believed in his own abilities and the direction which he was going to take. In addition he was convinced that with the help of his family friends and employees, he would succeed. By this time, he had already established the foundations for his company's future success. Through years of experimentation he developed an effective recipe which had all the trademarks of having been conceived on the shop floor. It was a product of thousands of transactions with many customers, sensing their basic needs as paying consumers. Their desire to get better value for their money and to be treated like human beings. There was nothing really magical about this recipe, it was based on narrowly focusing on a niche market, the recipe included basic components. Higher turnover, lower profits. Selling goods which meet the requirements of customers. Offering a new kind of shopping experience to customers. Better value for less money in a friendly, pleasant and enthusiastic environment. Merchandise in the lower and popular ranges. Staff training as an investment rather than expense. Low rental, low prices, low advertising costs, self-service, mass display in shops, open display in windows. Having established a sound foundation for further expansion, Rainier then created a separate company which was to incorporate the existing stores. He wanted to retain BG Bazaars as the name of the new company, but after a brainstorming session with John Lee, it was decided to use the name of Pep Stores. Pep Stores was launched in 1965 and in September of that year, it took over BG Bazaars in De AR, which officially became the first Pep Store shop. Two Pep branches were opened in Kimberley and Postmastberg in December while the remaining BG Bazaars branches continued to operate independently. In 1969, they were incorporated under the Pep banner. Due to Irpington's modest size and relative isolation from the country's main urban areas, it became clear to Rainier that the town wouldn't be a suitable choice for the new company's headquarters. 
In 1966, Rainier took his family and hit the long dusty road to Cape Town by his car, to risk everything on a business venture in a different city. When they got to Cape Town, they settled in the northern suburb of Belleville. The first five months of Pep's existence was characterized by a small financial loss. But after obtaining credit with some suppliers the financial situation improved resulting in 10,000 rands profit and a 600% rise in turnover by February 1967. By then, the number of Pep stores had increased to 10. In late 1967, the company took possession of its newly built head office and warehouse in Quilsrevere. During that time, Christo Wies who worked at PEP during his university holidays joined the company on a full-time basis as the secretary and Rainier's second in command. Christo's job included finding premises around the country for new stores, and was also responsible for recruiting staff. By 1968, the number of stores increased to 29, with an average turnover of 79,000 rands per store. PEP's rapid expansion necessitated new technology. And in 1969 the company received credit to acquire brand new CASH registers worth 500,000 rands. By the end of February 1970, sales increased by 130% to 6.6 .6 million rands with profits sitting at 268%. Rainier Van Ruyen laid the groundwork for the next phase in Pep Store's evolution. Focused on fine-tuning the methods and practices and creating the Pep identity. In 1971, Whitey Basun was approached by Rainier Van Ruyen to become the financial director of the retail clothing chain that Van Ruyen had founded called Pep Stores Ltd., or as it was locally known, Pep. Van Ruyen was planning to list the company on the JSE as Pepco. Basun agreed to join the company as financial director and in 1974 became head of operations. Basun then bought eight small grocery stores in the Western Cape called ShopRite, which became a subsidiary of Pep. ShopRite went on to unbundle from Pep and become the leading food retailer in the African continent. By 1981, Pep had grown to 500 stores, 10 factories, 12,000 employees, and a turnover of close to 300 million rands. At this point Christo Wies bought out Van Royen's holdings in Pepco and became the major shareholder. Wies became the chairman of Pepco. Under Wies' stewardship, Pep, trading as Pepco, went on to launch and acquire more companies. Pepco's subsidiaries operate over two 400 stores in 11 African countries, while employing over 17,000 employees. In 2014 we sold Pepco to Steinhoff International in exchange for about 20% of Steinhoff's issued shares.